Welcome back to the AI Arena tutorial series. Today, we're going to be going over training configuration. And if you want to train the ultimate AI, it's key that you master this. This is basically telling your AI what to do with the data that you just collected. There's three big areas, and I'm going to go over each of them. Let's start off with training intensity. So this basically tells your AI how much of the data that you just collected to incorporate and to change its current policy. Right? So you can imagine a low training intensity as basically marginally changing the policy by incorporating the data to a small extent. Right? And this is great when you have a well-established policy, your AI kind of knows how to fight. Moderate is kind of like you want a decent amount of change, but you don't want too much change. And high is basically when you want to incorporate all the data. It won't completely override your previous policy, but it will change it to a large extent and it could result in your AI essentially forgetting some of the other stuff that it has learned. So be careful when you do this. Now, I'm also gonna hop back and forth between the advanced config and the simple config, just to explain the training intensity for both sets of audiences. Now for the advanced config, this is more so when you have a decent grasp of machine learning, or at least these concepts. But don't worry, if you don't, you can always learn about them by hovering over this question mark, and it kind of explains what each of these are. But for the people who are familiar with machine learning, we give you some basic hyperparameters you can tune, like epochs, batch size, learning rate. And then these two, some machine learning people might also not be familiar with, which is lambda. And specifically, we split it up into directional lambda and action lambda. Now you can think of lambda as being how strong you want your prior to be on your previous policy. So you can imagine that you have a policy and you trained it really well, and you don't want the new data to completely override it. So you would set this to a really large number. And this basically says that you want to trust your prior policy a lot more than the new data that you collected. And so this will result in very marginal training. And we split it up for people that maybe have a very solid directional policy, but not so much an action policy. And so you can say, I want to keep what I'm doing direction-wise, but I want to change what I'm doing action-wise, and vice versa. Usually though, when you're just starting off training, you're going to probably want these at zero because your model doesn't really know what to do. So you don't want it to remember that. So that's basically training intensity. Let's hop back into the simple config for the focus area. Now for the focus area, these are basically areas where you can tell your AI what to focus on during training. And this is very important because your AI cannot read your mind. And so what results is something that's called spurious correlations, where the AI will find patterns where patterns really shouldn't exist. And so what you can do to prevent that from happening is you can explicitly say, I want you to focus on the opponent positioning, just so that the AI doesn't accidentally find this weird relationship with health that happened to hold true when you were showing it the data, but is not really what you intended for it to learn. And so we have a bunch of these, and again, you can just hover over the question mark beside it to get a full description of what each of these mean. The advanced config is the exact same thing, however, we just provide you with a lot more inputs that you can toggle. In the simple config, we essentially group a lot of these together for you. And finally, we have the data cleaning part. So first, I'm just going to talk about this concept of sparsity. And then I'm going to go over to some of the more advanced concepts. Basically, when you have data collection turned on, but you're not doing anything, they don't really want to train on idling for most cases. And so we provide you the ability to just remove sparsity in case you accidentally were idling when you didn't really mean to. Of course, if you want idling as part of your strategy, feel free to not toggle this. That's why we provide you with the option. Now let's get into something a bit more advanced over here. So usually I like training with remove sparsity, so I'll just keep that on for now. And then we have two additional ways to clean your data, and this is essentially to balance data. Now, I'll briefly explain this problem of imbalanced action labels. So basically, our neural network has two heads, and so it tries to do both a directional action and a non-directional action at the same time. But what happens when it's trying to learn from you is that the data set is actually very skewed to dominate on directional actions. And that's because when most people play fighting games, they're holding a direction. And so for most of the 60 frames in a second, you actually have input from the direction. But this is not true for the non-directional actions where instead of holding it, you're clicking it. And on average, humans have a response time 
of being able to click a button, one every 15 frames or about four times a second if you're mashing a button. That there's this huge imbalance and we've actually seen that about 96% of the frames that have data for directions don't have data for non-directional actions. And so we provide you with some ways to solve this. So one way is oversampling. For those in machine learning, you'll be very familiar with this. And then another way is an algorithm that we created in-house called multi-stream backpropagation to actually approximate oversampling at a fraction of the compute. Now, I actually do this a lot of times just because it's way faster and it approximates it very well. Now, keep in mind that this is just an approximation, so the results are not going to be exactly the same every time. However, a large amount of times they are pretty similar. And in fact, sometimes I find that multi-stream is actually better. So you can use each at your own will. Now, data cleaning is more of on the experimental side for us, so we're looking forward to your feedback on this. And once you're ready, just click Train Model. Now, I'm going to toggle a few things that I think will result in a decently trained model. And what I'm showing my model is basically how to jump back on stage when it's off stage, which is exactly what we showed you for the data collection part of the tutorial. What I'm going to tell it to focus on, on where the platforms are and how far we are from those platforms. And again, I removed sparsity. I put multi-stream on. I ramped epochs up and I turned lambda all the way down. And I'm also going to ramp up learning rate because it's very low right now. So I'm going to ramp it up. And now let's click train and watch the magic happens. Now we're going to be paying attention in the top left corner. And now we see that the policy is starting to change. Now we're on a platform right now and I didn't really show it what to do on a platform. So it's kind of saying to go in both directions. But as soon as I start moving it off platform, now you see that the probability of jumping went way up, increased by 44%. And the probability of going right also increased dramatically. And now it's at 68%. And now if I go to the opposite end, you'll see that there's a very high probability of moving left, 77%, and the probability of jumping increased by 69%. So it's doing exactly what we wanted. We're able to make sure that the neural network is focusing on the platforms and how far it is from the platforms. And that's it, guys. That's how you use the training configurations and how you train your agent to do exactly what you want.